I'd like to share with you today a story about an unintended mentor that was in my life. Uh, a mentor that changed my life forever without even knowing that, that he changed my life. And it all started on a very hot and humid night in the Caribbean on the island of St. Martin. It was about 20 years ago when I stepped off of the airplane into this new world, this new adventure. An adventure that I really didn't even understand why I was on, but it was an adventure that I acknowledged as I stepped off of the airplane that it was yet another time in my life where I was dealing with a sense of crisis, a sense of identity and purpose crisis that I needed to figure out. You see, I was one of those people growing up where if something would go wrong, I would find another adventure to deal with whatever that is. And it's, it's a common theme in my life. And in a way, it's really helped me become who I am today. And this was no exception. I was wearing a burden of failure on my back when I stepped off the airplane that day. And like I said, uh, a, a real crisis of identity. When I stepped off and got through the security at the, at the airport, there was a man waiting for me. And when I got through, he said his name was Captain Paul. And I said, hello. And he was a man of very few words. All he said to me was, follow me. So I did. So we left the airport, crossed over the road in St. Martin, went down a little pathway to a small marina, and he said, hop in my boat. And it was a little dinghy, a little rowboat. And I thought to myself, what the hell am I getting myself into here? Literally, I did not know really why I was there. I did not know what I was stepping into. I didn't know who this person was. And now I was asked to get into his paddle boat. So I did. Captain Paul is a man of very few words, so what was probably only a 15-minute paddle felt like an hour. But in my mind, this was a new adventure. It was a clean slate. It was a brand new phase of my life. And as we're paddling, I, I noted how bright the stars were that night in the Caribbean. If you've ever been in the Caribbean at night, it's a whole different sky, isn't it? And on a moonless night, like the night it was uh, that particular night, it was really neat, too, because I saw the silhouette of the volcanic mountains in the background as we were paddling away from shore. And it was just, it, it was the sense of, a, of something new, something exciting about to happen in my life. And as we paddled, we finally arrived to our destination, which to me looked like a pirate ship. And in fact, it was a pirate ship. The next morning, I took this picture, the very next morning, this is Captain Paul. Captain Paul said, let's hop back into the dinghy, I'm gonna give you a tour. I'm going to show you what you're going to be doing for the next three weeks. So what I was about to do was to scrape the hull of this 110-foot gaff rig schooner completely down to the core and then repaint it. And that's what I did for the next three weeks. And I did it with gratitude because what I was leaving was a toxic work environment. This environment doesn't matter what you get me to do, how much heavy manual labor it is, as long as I'm working in an environment where I can, I can be creative and be respected, I'm all over it. So I spent the next three weeks working on the hull and then the next many months helping Captain Paul sail cargo all through the Caribbean and Latin America. The toxic environment I was leaving was the film industry. After doing a year here at UMBSJ, I found myself going to film school for three years and I found my passion at film school, the passion for the medium of storytelling with film. And as soon as I graduated, I joined the union and I started working the ranks of the camera department on Hollywood feature films. But one thing the film school didn't prepare me for was that toxic environment that is not new to me. Generations of toxicity have been existing in the Hollywood film industry. And we're seeing evidence of that right now as it unravels with Me Too and No More movements happening as we speak. I got a very small little taste of what that was all about. But it's really interesting as, a, as an adult experiencing bullying, and at the end of the day, that's what I experienced. I was bullied on film sets for three years. Experiencing the feeling of being bullied for the first time as an adult is really trippy. As a kid, I was one of those very fortunate kids that had this great friend group, and I never experienced being bullied as a kid. So I didn't know what this feeling was like. I always had a heart for, for kids who were being bullied, and I always stood up for them, but I personally never knew what the feeling of being bullied was like until I was in my 20s on film sets. And I put up with it for three years. 
And I, uh, and the, uh, the very last project I did, it was a six month science fiction series. And I remember the very last day I was like, I'm done. You know, I'm a creative person. My creative soul is being stripped out of me because of oppressive, power hungry people that I'm working with. And for me, it was a sense of loss saying, you know, I invested so much. My family, my friends, my community, all are invested in my adventure into the film industry. But now I don't know what to do because I do not want to go back to that environment. And I also remember thinking to myself, if I ever had the opportunity to redesign an industry, it would be that one. Because it's such a creative, magical industry. So much good comes out of the movies that we watch. But knowing what goes in behind the scenes to make these movies um, can take a little bit of that magic out of movie making. So, as I jumped onto the Aventure, was the name of the boat, I learned a lot about sailing. I learned a ton about sailing. And the cool thing about the film industry is one of the most exciting things for me was learning the technology. And back then, we shot with film, not with video, not on hard drives, with actual film. So it was my job to learn how to take film, string it through the camera mags, and, and make sure it goes, gets onto the camera okay, take the film off, get it into the can, send it off for processing. There's so many technical elements of the film making process that I absolutely loved because I'm a very uh, curious person when it comes to technology. Sailing, very similar type of learning. There's all these different parts. When you've got 11 different sails on your boat and if you want to tack, that's like change your, your direction, it takes half an hour to get all the lines in the right spot and all the sails set in the right spot. So I learned a lot about sailing, but the most important thing that I learned was Captain Paul's philosophy about business. Because Captain Paul believed that business had a purpose beyond just making profit. Captain Paul believed that business was there to serve people with integrity and to do it in a way that honors Mother Earth. Now, Captain Paul isn't one of those people that would say, oh, I run a social enterprise. I've got a sustainable business. No, Captain Paul just ran good business. He just understood how to run good business. And he had a heart for people. So what Captain Paul did with the Aventura for 30 years, years before I met him is he would serve underserved populations, islands and communities that typically couldn't get cargo quickly. So little shops on little islands like the island of Montserrat or Saba, these are small islands that, that larger cargo ships are not bringing regular loads in. So Paul saw an opportunity for three decades to serve underserved populations because he had a heart for people and he realized that he had a solution to their business problem and he could, he could support himself and support people like me, some of his staff, in doing honest business, doing honest work. And Paul did it in a way that was so environmentally friendly. Out of the thousands of kilometers that we sailed over the years from, from South America up to Martha's Vineyard and all through the Caribbean, we so rarely turned that diesel engine on. Sometimes for an emergency you're coming into port, you need to, but everything else was by the power of the wind. So this is where I got exposed to what a lot of people in the business circles today call the triple bottom line. We measure people, planet, and profit. And again, Paul would just say, this is just good business. You make good business by, by doing good. And remember, Paul doesn't say much, right? But Paul, in him not saying much, demonstrated something to me that was so critically important as a mentor, is he just ran a good business and he lived true to his values. And, you know, I did about three years in the Caribbean. And I had the foresight before jumping on to the sailboat to buy a video camera. And the interesting thing is I said yes to this adventure three days after I quit the film industry. A bunch of my friends were knowing that I needed to let off a little bit of steam because I was depressed. And when Greg Hemmings is depressed, look out. So they're like, let's go to St. Andrews, it's about an hour away from here. And we went to the Tidal Pool Pub. It's now a dollar store, if anybody, if anybody goes. Uh, and we saw Hot Toddy play. And when I was, when I was uh, watching Hot Toddy, I was on the dance floor, and I met this lovely um, lady in her 60s, long silver hair. And, and we just started to connect uh, on the dance floor. And she asked me about me, and I said, I just quit my, my, my career, and I don't know what I'm going to do in life. I'm only trained for this. And she told me that she was missing her boyfriend, who was a Dutch captain living in the Caribbean on a sailboat. And I told her, I was like, you know what? I used to sail when I was a kid. I'd love to do something like that. I just kind of threw it out there. A few days later, I see Charlene again. She goes, good news. I got the money to buy your plane ticket to go down to the Caribbean. 
I was like, what? I didn't say I was going to do it. I just said I'd like to do it. But because I was in a moment of crisis, and because Greg Hemmings deals with crisis and stress by going on adventures. So if you ever see me in Dubai or later today going to Ukraine, I wouldn't blame you if you said, you must be going through a life crisis right now. So anytime I go on adventures, there's a good chance I'm trying to figure something out in my life. So when I had the opportunity to say yes to those tickets, I was actually saying yes to a pivot that changed my life forever. And if I had stayed home, I probably would have ended up back on the, on the film sets that were sucking the creative soul out of me. Or worse, I would have just sat around home being lost and not really knowing and settling for less. But I took the adventure, and I would be lying to you if I didn't think, hmm, I wonder what type of cargo I'll be sailing all around these places. As long as it wasn't weapons or, or humans. Drugs? <laughs> it's all for the story, right? Since then, as I said, I bought a video camera and I captured everything that I could in the Caribbean. I, I met so many great people, visited so many different islands, different countries, different cultures, and I started to regain my passion for film storytelling because what I was able to do was capture my adventures with the heart of sharing them back home with my friends and my family. At this point, I still had no clue that I was going to rekindle my, my love for film and create a film company. But I still had these skill sets and this passion for capturing moments on camera. So when I came home three years later, I just started, I continued doing it. I started filming a lot of music festivals. And I would travel all through the US and Canada on, on arts grants, filming music festivals. I, I was living, living the dream. But as I was doing that, again, not for a career, just more for my passion, I started to realize, geez, I've got a crew that's slowly building up around me, supporting me in, in, the, in these passion projects. Maybe we can actually take a go at this. And we started to do some commercial projects. Then we got our first TV series, a series called Planet Luxury that I did with my friend Andrew Tidby. It was his concept to go around the world filming the world's most expensive luxury items. Totally in line with my B Corp values. It's great. And uh, that led to so many other different TV series. Like we did a wrestling TV series. We did an MMA TV series. We, we did an architecture series. And we were really getting into the world of TV and documentaries. And we, we, three years ago, came to a point where we had an opportunity to certify as a B Corp. And a B Corporation is a company that is not only saying that they are good for the planet and good for people, they're certifying it. So it's a certifying body that really keeps us accountable. And guess what? It's not easy running a company based on the triple bottom line, people, profit, and the planet. The triple bottom line that Captain Paul introduced me to, it's not easy. It's messy. You fail. I've failed. I've been messy. But having a guiding star like the B Corp certification has kept me in a place where every decision I make I try to make it in a way that is going to honor people, the planet, at the same time as building a good business. You know, we've been building Hemmings House for 15 years. Hemmings House is the, is the production company that I own and my team has helped me build. And it's been a great adventure. We film all around the world. And as a result of getting involved with the B Corp global community, I'm, a, I'm an official B Corp uh, global ambassador, I've been able to host a lot of discussions uh, about how to do business with a heart for positive change, using our businesses as a force for good. And recently, this was two weeks ago, two weeks ago on another, um, on another crisis, uh, on another crisis I had, because I went to New York, just joking, there's no crisis going on here. We hosted another one of our Love Economy events. So Captain Paul put something in my heart that, that proved to me that we can build business that is good for the world. From that, I started to create um, a friend group all over the United States and Canada of other entrepreneurs and CEOs that believe in the same thing. We started having these dialogues about, can we be part of a solution where we can change our economy from one that is based on fear-based decisions and greed to one that's based on love and abundance? And we use the word love in the boardroom, you know, it, gets, uh, it, it raises eyebrows. And we want to make people feel uncomfortable about this. But why is it that we spend so many hour of our waking hours at work and we're not talking about love? We're not treating each other um, as family. These are high-level CEOs that, that we're with uh, in Brooklyn two weeks ago. We've had these type of events in New York, in Toronto, in Calgary, in Vancouver, 
Portland, Oregon, all over the place where there's this movement now of CEOs and entrepreneurs who want to use their businesses the way Paul had his business, a way that honors the earth and honors people at the same time as making good business. The love economy discussions are heavily rooted in mentorship. And remember I said Paul was an unintended mentor to me. He didn't know he was a mentor. But when I look at what I'm doing in building a business, I have to be a mentor to my staff. I have to be a mentor to others who are up and coming. And that has inspired myself and my team to create this thing called Filmpreneur, where we're sharing a lot of our skills and our ideas and our wisdom um, that we've gained over the last 20 years with other startup filmmakers and other, other storytellers who want to make a profession out of, their, out of their gifts. You know, in other contexts, you might, you might say, so you're helping your competition, Greg, you know, get better and better. I was like, yes! And they're not competition, they're collaborators. We are part of this new movement of professional storytellers that know that we have a power for real destruction or real beautiful life-giving experiences with the power of story in our hands. And Filmpreneur, it's all about inspiring, giving the tools, and coaching and mentoring other film storytellers to use their gifts to make the world a happier and kinder place. Captain Paul passed away about three years after I said goodbye to him in the Caribbean. And I, I had the fortune of seeing him a, a, a few times when he sailed back up to New Brunswick, down to Boca, back in St. Andrews to see Charlene. And I never really had a chance to tell him how much of a mentor he was, because I remember he was a man of very few words. But the real joy in what I learned about mentorship with Paul is it's not about sitting down and imparting knowledge, it's about living to the values. And the way I saw Paul run his business and the way I saw Paul, tr Paul treat me set a new tone for me, saying, you know what? Those three years working on that destructive, toxic film industry was not the norm. I thought it was. I thought maybe being a professional, you have to work in environments like this, where there's bullying, there's abuse, there's uh, you know, power trips. And that was my context of professional life until I met Paul. And just the way he ran his business gave me hope. And his ripples, this is what I never had a chance to tell him, his ripples have gone so far. When I just think about how his ripples have impacted me and the way I'm trying to make my business uh, work in the world, and his ripples have gone into my employees, into our contractors, into our friends, into our communities, into our, into our customer base. And I just think it's really exciting for all of us here to recognize that we are all unintentional mentors to somebody else. And what I'd like to do, besides saying thank you to Paul for those ripples, is I want to challenge all of us to, to honor the unintended mentors in our own lives that have gotten us to the place where we are now, but also be acutely aware of the fact that you are an unintended mentor to somebody else. And like some of the folks in the film industry I was working with who chose not to be mentors, but chose to be negative forces in a number of people's lives. Unfortunately, their ripples go really far as well. So it's up to all of us to keep ourselves in check and keep ourselves accountable, no matter how messy it gets running our own businesses and how much, how much joy and how much pain and blood, sweat, and tears it takes in, in building business, to always find that guiding light and realize that we do have a force and a force for good in our, in our businesses and in our careers, just in the way we show up in the world. But with that, I want to say thank you and find your Captain Paul inside you. He's in all of you. Thank you.